Welcome back to Mental Health Mondays. I hope you are all well. So today I'm going to be doing a video on how to support your partner with their BPD. Being in a relationship with someone with BPD can be tricky. I mean, <laughs> I say this, I'm saying this from the other side because I'm the one that's diagnosed with BPD. However, my past relationships have definitely been made more difficult due to my BPD. So I'm kind of making this from the perspective of what I would want from a partner. Hopefully those of you with BPD can show this to your partners or even your friends or family because to be honest these tips apply to anyone. Obviously every relationship has its struggles, it's not just down to BPD and I think it also depends on where a person is with their BPD, i.e. where they are in their recovery, if they're right at the beginning, if they have some awareness on how BPD affects their relationships, etc, etc, because I know in the past my relationships have been worse because I haven't had that understanding, like I, I didn't realise that I was doing certain things because of my BPD. So let's get into the tips. Number one is research. So I think it is important to do your research on BPD as a mental illness. However, I will note, and you may already know this, if you Google BPD, you're going to get a lot of negative shit come up essentially and this is exactly why I make my videos because BPD is such a stigmatized illness it's shown in such a negative light especially if you search it online I was told when I was diagnosed to avoid looking online and just hearing about it from my psychiatrist so I think take what you see online with a pinch of salt in fact I think the best way you can learn about BPD is to just ask your partner how BPD directly affects their life because it is different for everyone one, but I think just getting a general sense of does fear of rejection and abandonment come into it, self-harm, suicidal ideation or attempts, emotional instability etc etc. I did a video on the symptoms of BPD if you want to go and check that out but I think it's good to get a picture as to why your partner acts the way they do. My next tip is communication. Obviously this is key in any relationship but I think with BPD actively listening and validating your partner is important because people with BPD are so often invalidated and misunderstood. It's also important because from a person with BPD's perspective I've often expected my partner to read my mind and to know exactly why I am behaving in that way. There may have been a trauma seven years ago as to why I am lashing out to them at that point and they're not to know that so I think it's always important to communicate and for those people with the BPD to say this is why I act the way that I do and for the partner to understand that there's always going to be a root cause and a trigger as to why they may be behaving in a certain way. Number three is to show support. Let them know that you're there when you need them if they are having a bad BPD day talking if they want to talk, letting them watch movies in bed, bring them food, etc, etc. My next one is to practice non-judgment because often people with BPD can be embarrassed to let you know what's going on in their mind because to the average person what they're dealing with may seem really really trivial but to them it can be a really really big deal. If you've never struggled with mental illness you might find it difficult to get to grasp as to why they have issues surrounding a certain thing and sometimes people with BPD might be scared to let you know in case it sounds stupid. So I think the most important thing is just to have an open mind and know that everything they experience is very real. The final point, number five, is to take threats seriously. Suicide and self-harm behaviours are not to be seen as attention seeking behaviours. To play devil's advocate, especially in the early stages, I know this was true for me when I was younger, I would communicate things in the wrong way and I'm not proud of saying that I would use threats in a way of trying to keep my partner closer because that's in my brain. I genuinely didn't realise that that was wrong. Um, it's just kind of how my brain used to work. However, that aside, when someone with BPD says they're gonna do something, best believe they're gonna do it. And I think if they do reach out to you in that moment, that's them, that's, you know, the little sane person, as you will, in their brain, not the BPD, saying, okay, 
I don't want to carry out this act. I will, but maybe first of all I should reach out to someone instead of just doing it. And this is not your time to judge, like I said, practice non-judgement. It's your time to be there for them in any way you can. Let them scream, punch a pillow, talk, whatever it is to get them out of that state. And that is the end of my tips. I will know that it is important to obviously look after yourself as well. I understand that BPD and being in a relationship with someone with BPD can be difficult, but of course, it's always worth it if you love the person. You can learn to see the difference between them and the illness, but it's important to not get wrapped up in becoming their savior. It's important to let the person with BPD, you know, do their own recovery with you as a support and not lean on you as everything. So with that being said, I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you did and let me know if you have any future suggestions for videos around BPD. I am more than willing to talk about anything and everything to do with BPD and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!